G'day. <laughs> Glenn Morris here from the Smart Energy Lab, and today I've got a big 12 volt inverter. Yes. Now, this is another product from Voltex. So I've uh, had a few of their portable power stations batteries, but this is one big 12 volt inverter. It's a three kilowatt unit. So let's have a look inside. As usual, I haven't opened this box, so this is all first time experience for me. Now, why would you want a big 12 volt inverter? Well, 12 volt is the natural voltage for uh, vehicles. So if you've got a, a camper van, uh, a caravan, a relocatable vehicle, chances are you've got a 12 volt uh, battery system. So here it is. Now, what have we got in here? A bit of foam packaging. Okay. Right, here it is. Let me turn it around to your side. So, um, first, first uh, kind of experience of this unit, metal. It looks like an aluminium uh, case, which is also like a heat sink for this unit. Um, Some hard plastic end caps. Uh, large terminals for connecting a 12 volt battery, and um, if I turn it around so you can see it, these are screened terminals here, so that once you've got the cables connected, there's no exposed live parts. Some cooling fans, we'll find out more about its cooling, and the business end, in terms of output power, we've got a couple of socket outlets, uh, a circuit breaker, uh, we've got a, uh, a comms port, hmm, interesting, and a remote control switch and TTL power. Now, transistor, transistor logic. So, hmm, these are all new to me. And three operational modes, on, off, and standby. So let's talk a bit about those features. So the, the raw number is 3000 watts, but more correctly, 3000 VA, 3000 volt amps. Uh, watts are basically real work, and VA is, uh, and, uh, acknowledges that there is reactive power components with some loads. But 3000 watts into, um, you know, like running a heater or something would be true, but if you're running a pump or motor, uh, it'll be a little bit less based on the power factor of that device. The other thing that's quite impressive, it's got a 100% overload rating. That's um, 6,000 watts for surges. Now, that means if you do have something like an inductive load or a pump um, or a motor, that when it starts up, it draws a lot of power for a few milliseconds or sometimes even a second or two, uh, that 6,000 watts can get you over that hump. Now, it is a... Uh, Output voltage uh, suitable for Australia, so it's 230, 240 volts, plus or minus 3%, and uh, these come in 50 and 60 hertz variants, so suitable for countries that have 60 hertz. Now, a headline feature of this is that it's a pure sine wave inverter. Now, what's that all about? <laughs> well, some of the, the cheaper um, small model inverters, uh, small as in, you know, not permanently installed, but portable inverters, sometimes cheat a little bit and use kind of a, a really crude form of conversion from DC to AC, sometimes called modified square wave or even sometimes called modified sine wave. Uh, anything but a pure sine wave is not good for rotating machines. So if you've got a motor, a fan, it needs to be run with pure sine wave. Resistive loads don't really care that much. The Unit can cope with a high power factor range, so from 0.2 to unity, that means it will run appliances that have poor power factor, such as uh, uh, fluorescent lights and uh, motors and pumps. The input voltage is a nominal 12 volts, but it actually will operate from 10.8 up to 16 volts. It's about 87% efficient, Now that'll be measured uh, uh, with energy in, energy out, so your DC in versus your AC out. There is some self-consumption in that conversion process. 
The efficiency under 30% overload is 91.5%. Now, that is pretty awesome. Uh, you're not wasting a lot of energy. If this is installed in an RV and uh, you're not using any power, this thing still consumes a small amount. So on standby, quarter of an amp at 12 volts. So uh, <laughs> that's uh, basically three watts. Um, not, not very much at all. Uh, and, but when there is... Uh, the unit is powered up, but there is no load. And that's different from standby. I'll explain that in a minute. It is 1.45 amps when there's no load, but it is powered up. Now, it's got a, a USB interface, uh, which means you can get charging from this. So 5 volts uh, DC at 2 amps, so you can charge some appliances off this. And it has three operational modes. Now, there is a switch on the front there, on, off, and eco. Now, what's that all about? Well, on is on all the time. Off is off all the time. But eco, or sometimes called standby mode, is where the unit sort of goes into sleep until it's called upon. So it's looking for a load to be turned on. And when the load's turned on, there'll be a slight delay, and then it'll power up. Now, Eco mode is really useful, especially if you've got appliances that are basically off at night time. So you're in your caravan or RV uh, and you're basically finished for the day, uh, turned everything off. This thing goes to sleep with you and uses very little power. So you don't even have to turn it off to, to minimize drain. The um, In eco mode, it's uh, starting power is about 30 watts. Now what that means is it needs to see a load of about 30 watts. So there is one little you know, gotcha with eco mode is that if you've got a very small appliance, something like a small phone charger that draws only 15 watts, it won't actually draw enough power for this thing to think it's time to start up. So in that case, you would need to manually put it into on mode. But for most appliances, 30 watts is almost nothing, and uh, this will just automatically power up. The um, TTL interface, I really can't say much about that. I just know it's got one and it's uh, rated at 12 and volts, 200 milliamps. So maybe there is some external um, appliances that are designed to work with this, but or maybe I can find out and put it in the description. So um, simple display, green light is normal and red light is fault. Uh, it, it has an external contact switch. Now I did notice it on the front here. There's a, a little, little jumper here. Now, if you were to extend those wires, those little black wires, to a switch, you can remotely turn this on and off. So that's ideal if it's installed somewhere it's a bit inaccessible. So it's in a, a caravan, it's sort of under the bench somewhere, or an RV uh, with all your gear on top of it. Well, hopefully you give it some ventilation. You can still turn it on and off from a remote switch. That's pretty cool. So the unit's got a lot of built-in protection. It's got input over voltage. That means if you forever charge your poor old car or your house battery too high, more than 16 volts, it will protect itself. It's also got over discharge protection. That means when you connect it to a battery, now I've got a 400 amp hour 12 volt battery here, um, and you maybe left something plugged in overnight that would draw it a lot of power, you don't want to discharge this battery uh, to a critical level, particularly if it's a lead acid battery. They really don't like being flattened. Most uh, modern lithium batteries have low voltage protection built in anyway, but this will actually stop discharging and uh, turn itself off when the battery voltage drops too low. It's got um, overload protection. That means if you do plug in some massive load, let's say you put a couple of 2.4 kilowatt heaters on here and it's only rated for 3000 watts or three kilowatts, uh, it will uh, protect itself from overload and shut down safely. It's got short circuit protection. So if there is damage to a cable and there's a short circuit, it's got a, a circuit breaker uh, built into the unit to protect from short circuit. And it also has over temperature protection. Like I said, if you put it in the back of an RV and piled all your sleeping bags on top of it and then tried to draw a lot of power from it, it's going to get hot. And at some point, the electronics want to protect themselves, and so it will shut down on over temperature. Speaking of temperature, its operating range is huge, basically all of Australia, from minus 20 at Perisher to plus 60. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know where it would get to plus 60, but you know, maybe in the back of an RV uh, at Marble Bar it would. The uh, relative humidity, well, less than 95%, basically don't put it in a steam room. And it's got an IP rating, that means um, in terms of uh, intrusion protection of 20. Now, uh, two means a test finger, a 12.5 millimeter test finger can't get into this unit. So that's basic electrical safety. 
it's not weatherproof. You can't put this outdoors, you can't get water on it. So you just gotta consider it's an indoor rated inverter. Now in terms of managing heat, it's got two stages. One is natural heat dissipation. This whole unit has a, is basically a massive heat sink. So it dissipates a heat through its own uh, casing. But if that's not enough, then it's got some cooling fans. So it's intelligent cooling. It can bring those on as required. The, um, the dimensions of this unit, it's uh, 409 by 249 by 120, um, and it has a weight of 8.0 kilograms. Um, yeah, it actually feels really light, but yeah, I guess it's eight kilograms. There you go. So pairing something like this with a 12 volt uh, house battery, as it's sometimes called in a caravan or RV, is a great way of having AC power on the go when you're away from mains. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. Check it. <laughs>